47 million people living in America without any form of health care are desperately waiting as each month goes by that number dramatically increases. The current health care crisis is undermining the United States economy, and at this dire economic situation is getting worse as each day goes by. Action by Congress needs to be taken now. The time for change is now. 97 years of debate over this issue is too long. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Uh, following up on Larry is C. Roberts, President of the Chamber. George, thank you very much, and uh, thanks to uh, uh, all of you in the audience who are here and who are interested in this topic. I'm very much looking forward to the uh, comments that are made and questions that you might have. Particularly, want to thank our panelists for being here, and uh, and also to recognize Perry Bryant for uh, really uh, carrying the heavy work in terms of putting this uh, program together. So, panelists, all of you, thank you very much. And Perry, thank you. Am I speaking into this microphone? Okay. Yeah. Um, let me start with uh, just uh, uh, a little bit of a preface, which is to say that um, it's a, uh, uh, a pretty big task to try to speak for the employer community uh, in West Virginia, uh, partly because people who are uh, business owners and managers tend to be very independent in the way they uh, think about things and, and look at things. And so uh, what I would uh, begin with is to tell you that some of my uh, comments are going to be a combination of some uh, some personal opinion uh, mixed in with uh, everything that I've been able to do to try to get a sense uh, for what the employer community uh, believes in West Virginia. Um, some things we do know uh, include employers uh, support the idea and the notion of reforming our health care system um, in the United States. Um, I think there's probably ample uh, evidence to support that, but uh, everybody uh, who I know who speaks for the employer community, including the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the, the Business Roundtable, the National Association of Manufacturers, um, support the idea of finding solutions to our uh, burgeoning health care costs in this country. Um, I'm quick to point out that the reform appears to be supported by uh, people uh, as diverse as uh, Newt Gingrich, uh, former Senator Bill Frost, and and the former Senator Bob Dole uh, on the one side, and, and as my friend Mr. Thien pointed out, uh, several good people uh, on the other side as well. Uh, the employer community um, in the United States um, insures about 180 million people in this country. Uh, if you work for an employer uh, who employs 200 people or more, you have about a 98% probability of having a health care benefit a, and a good health care benefit provided by your employer. The annual cost uh, of those uh, health care benefits uh, in our country um, is in the range of $500 billion. We, uh, there seems to be very little disagreement and there are anywhere from 30 to 45 million and, and uh, all of those numbers have been used, uh, but there are anywhere from 30 to 45 million uninsured people in the United States. Um, I think there also seems to be pretty uh, general consensus that currently about 83% of our population uh, is insured and that uh, under the bill that was passed by the Finance Committee today, uh, it's anticipated that about 94% of the U.S. population um, would be uh, insured. One of the things that I have uh, enjoyed participating in and have enjoyed the most is that over a period of about the last two and a half years, um, Again, thanks to the uh, persistence and organizational ability of Perry Bryant, uh, a diverse uh, group of people representing hospitals, doctors, uh, healthcare providers at, at various levels, uh, working people uh, through the uh, AFL CIO and others, uh, school teachers, representatives of the council uh, of churches, and people with a particular interest in healthcare have been meeting about once a month at the uh, Chamber of Commerce office. Um, We've, uh, we've gotten to know each other better. We've uh, uh, been able to put some of our issues, uh, many of our issues, on the uh, on the table. I, I quick, I want to go back and say, included uh, in that group would be representatives uh, of insurers who also have participated uh, uh, in those discussions. And um, it's my opinion that uh, on uh, some very important issues related to healthcare reform, we probably agree on 
on many issues. I, my own number is that we agree on anywhere from 65 to 75 percent um, of the issues that we discuss. Um, I'm quick to say that, uh, particularly in talking to the small business community uh, in West Virginia, which uh, struggles to find health insurance that is uh, affordable, particularly for small business, that uh, those folks are really uh, most interested in their opportunity to find affordable uh, insurance. insurance. Insurance in West Virginia tends to be available, uh, and the quality of health care tends to be high. Uh, but if you're a small employer, uh, you're faced with uh, high insurance costs that continue uh, to, uh, to go up. Um, I think it's also uh, safe to say that um, within the employer community there's broad agreement that the private insurance market needs to be maintained um, uh, in this country um, and that employers are very skeptical in a program that uh, might be uh, a shot at the heart of the uh, private insurance market. The example that I would offer is that uh, my own parents who uh, live in Huntington uh, are, uh, are Medicare recipients, uh, and they also have uh, private supplemental insurance to supplement through Medicare. They don't want uh, the private insurance market uh, to go out of business because as grateful as they are to live in a country that provides uh, a med Medicare benefit, they also want to have uh, uh, their own private uh, insurance benefit to, uh, to help them. Uh, George, if you're telling me I'm out of time, I'll, uh, I'll gladly yield the microphone to, uh, to the next person on your list. Well, great. And we'll have plenty of time to, to get into that. And I'm only a fourth through my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I stopped you. Uh, the next speaker is Reverend Patch. Uh, good evening. It's, it's good to be here tonight. And uh, I don't feel so bad. I thought I was going to have a problem being a black preacher in just three minutes. But these guys are here. <laughs> Yeah. 